I will do ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, it's the Yorkshire Blazeman here and today I've got another review for you this is a very special review because the knife I'm reviewing today um, is the first knife that I ever got and the knife that started my whole collection so without further ado, let us get into the video so, let's kick off with a size comparison so what this knife is, this is a Robinson Sheffield slip joint which was a sailor's knife I've tried looking and I couldn't find anything of the manufacturer itself or any more information but this knife has a lot of heritage because uh, it was well I explain that later but first let's get into the size comparison so here is a open number 8 and here is a Victor Knox camper so this is quite a medium size knife smaller than it's actually quite a small knife if you're comparing it to the open L it's just a bit bigger than the camper so overall I would say it's quite a it's a small to medium size folding knife so putting these aside let's go into some of the history oh I actually do have a but Tornox Trekker here as well. So yeah, it is quite. This is a quite a small knife. So let's get into the history. As I was saying, this knife is from Sheffield, and if no one knows about the Sheffield stainless steel industry, at one point at time, Sheffield produced the finest quality steel out there in the world. Uh, back to the old well, Victorian times when the British Empire was going around. A lot of the steel was made in Sheffield, and if you find a lot of antique knives and cutlery and stuff like that, you will see the Sheffield pattern and made in Sheffield, which was one of the major industries in South Yorkshire. And to me, this knife has a lot of heritage to me, just because, not because it's my first ever knife I got and started the whole collection, it's because it is a piece of Yorkshire heritage. Because this is what you would classify as a traditional English working knife. And this knife is a sailor's knife as well. So, either the military or normal sailors going, exploring around uh, the world would carry something similar to this. Um, stainless steel or in Sheffield now is, was, it is not the finest quality anymore. It got overtook in the market as other countries developed, other steels developed countries produced a better quality of steel maybe for a cheaper price I actually don't know the actual reason why Sheffield Steel started to decline maybe because over cheap competition or whatever but stainless steel in Sheffield the industry declined and a lot of manufacturers closed down and shut down and there's only a few going on steel now around now and if anyone is up to date on the news well a few months ago I think it was a few months ago Tartar Steel a big steel industry in the UK won't bust uh, so that was a huge problem so steel in the UK is under a lot of pressure from foreign enterprises like Chinese steel so which is unfortunate but this is a key piece of South Yorkshire and basically English heritage of Sheffield steel so let us get into the knife after the brief history lesson so we have a bone handle with a lamb's foot stainless steel blade with the manufacturer's logo imprinted on there, which I will try and show you. There we are. Robinson Sheffield. So we have a man on the angle grinder, well, an old, not angle grinder, a sharpening stone, an old one, sharpening a knife. Robinson Sheffield. And it says here, Herbert, I'm going to try and try and read this don't get in frame Herbert Robinson sorry about that I'm just looking at it because I haven't I haven't used this knife in ages and I've not noticed this it's Herbert Robinson and I can't make out the final words underneath the Robinson so his company was run by Herbert Robinson or uh, yeah well the manufacturer was Herbert Robinson. So 
we've got just as I said dual bow and it's nice how you've got a mixture of colour there you got because you got the white here and all that you've got a um, lanyard here well not a lanyard but it's like a a place where you can put a lanyard so you can either put it around your neck or on your belt to keep it um, so it doesn't well say so you don't lose it so you can have it in your hand the rope around it and you can easily use it and we have a rope spike which when I originally was given the knife um, it was said that this was was a scout's knife and it was used to pick out uh, stones in horses hooves but after um, a discussion with a old friend and looking on the internet we've come to the conclusion that this was actually a rope spike uh, so you put in the rope and you would take bits off because the friend I was talking to his father well he was about yeah because this guy I was talking to was about 60 or something like that his father was in the navy and he had a similar knife to this and he said to me that this was a rope spike so that has given me the conclusion that this was a sailor's knife so let's get into the specs of this wonderful piece of English heritage so the overall blade length is 7.5 centimeters but the cutting length is 6.7 I would say in inches that is so overall blade length 3 inches but the cutting length comes to 2.6 so this knife is UK legal to carry but what's I was watching a video by Four Seasons Outdoor, Four Seasons Yorkshire put his link down below, subscribe to him, a fellow Yorkshireman he was telling me well, telling on his um, channel that um, I thought it was that if you've got a knife that's less than 3 inches um, non-locking it's legal to carry but you have to have a good reason for it but actually it's the policeman who can decide to take it off you or not and that's what he was saying so be careful about that um, so the handle size is 3.5 seven inches and in centimeters that is nine point I'll say that's about nine point six nine point seven so it is quite a small knife now as you can see the blade tapers and the main thickness of it is about 0.3 millimeters so it's about a standard thickness of a folding knife and the blade thickness not blade the handle thickness accumulates to 1 point oh, 1 point I'll say that's 1 1.7 1.7 centimeters so it is quite a thick handle for a folding knife when you hold the knife, because it's quite small, if you've got big hands, you're not going to be able to fully get a good grip on it. But when holding it, it feels pretty comfortable. But after a long use, the um, the top bit here, where the um, rope spike is, will dig into your hand and become uncomfortable. Since it's a slip jot, you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it, and with a a good amount of pressure you can push the blade so therefore when using this knife you want to keep your thumb as lower down the blade as possible uh, so you don't accidentally close it on yourself and cut yourself um, it's uh... Oh, what's wrong with me? I can't, forget, can't even remember the facts or what I'm about to say so it would be comfortable without the rope spike if you say cut that off it will be comfortable but it is interesting to see the rope spike on it because you don't find many knives now that actually have this idea on it so it is an interesting looking knife um, the lamb's foot blade is a good uh, work utility blade if you look at a lot of work knives from uh, England or other countries the lamb's foot blade does uh, provide uh, a good you know a good blade to use because 
if you're not going to get the tip damage because you won't be really using the tip for utilitarian purposes on the ship you definitely won't be using it because what you're using your knife will be for eating for woodwork for maybe cutting a rope you wouldn't need a point so that's why um, Alam's foot blade is good because it's also strong it's a strong um, blade choice to use instead of rather than using a a clip point you can easily break the tip you can't break the tip on that well it will take a lot of force and a lot of effort to break it but it is a strong blade so I can't really do an accurate good and bad features on this knife because personally myself I don't use it for EDC because it's one of those knives that you don't want it to get damaged, you don't want to lose it because it has sentimental value for you rather than I'll happily use the open air and beat the crap out of it because it doesn't really have much use, sentimental value to me it's a cheap knife, that's good and I use it for tasks but I wouldn't want to use this, even though this is a work knife you don't want, if it's got sentimental value, you don't want to damage it or risk losing it so this is why it is hard to do a good and a bad analysis about it because if it's got value to you, you want to be biased and say it's not really good to you. But um, I'm going to try. So, things I like about this knife. I like the fact that it's an English knife, Robertson stainless uh, steel from Sheffield, which is good, what is good quality. Um, I like the blade design, I like the handle, I like the look of it. Closed and open. I like the fact that it's using, as I said, bone handle because it gives it a uh, unique look. Because you find a lot of stag handle and a lot of wood handled on traditional knives, but it's nice to see a bit of bone. Um, I like that it's slip, a slip joint because it still keeps with that um, time period. It's still like an antique, you could call it an antique knife. And it's got a lot of history to it. So this knife, well, I actually don't know the history of it because my granddad bought it in the antique shop for me for my first knife and I think the owner didn't know the history behind it so this knife could have been used by a sailor who knows so it's nice to sort of think about what it could have been used for who could have used it and what it's used for um, issues with it I would say when holding it you've got to make sure that the um, ring for the lanyard is away from it's not up or down because it becomes uncomfortable you need to make sure that it's straight like that because it just gives an uncomfortable grip also uh, the top bit here the rope spike and the top bit of the knife when using it for a long period of time that will dig into the side of your hand and just when you get a tight grip on it it's just going to put pressure there and it will hurt over a long period of time so that is another bad thing Another bad thing is because it's an old knife, you can expect this that the um, scales are pulling apart here, that um, the metal is bending, and you can see the gaps in there. And even I put pressure on it, you can hear them squeezing together, which is a, a bad thing. But you can sort of expect this from a um, old knife, and you, you can see that it's just bent here and curves out. There's a bit of rust in there, I need to clean it out as well. Um, so about the camera not. So yeah, this has been the review of a traditional English work knife, the Robinson's um, Lamb's Foot. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, that'd be much appreciated. You can be more extreme than that, subscribe to my channel because it will really help me grow. And when we get to 100 subs, I'm going to do a giveaway where I'm going to be mollifying one of these bad boys, putting a TYB style to it and sending that off to one lucky winner so if you want to have the opportunity of winning a modified open L then um, subscribe to my channel and I'll do a video when we get to 100 subs to explain how you could be the lucky sod to win it so yeah thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time